come on you can do better than that give jesus some praise i mean you guys raised over ten thousand dollars for run for a hope and that is amazing amen that is powerful amen and i want to call up my wife amen my better half amen and when she comes up you guys got to sing isn't she lovely are you ready isn't she wonderful amen come on give her a hand this is my wife we've been together 33 years she was 16 years old when i met her and you do the math amen and um and so uh, we've been together a long time amen we got grandkids amen we got so this is my wonderful wife amen give her a hand amen amen you may be seated amen and it is so good to be here, amen, and we, we love your pastors, and, and you know, we're from Whittier, amen, we're from, we have the same pastors, and I know sometimes they say, um, you're so, you guys are so close to them, and how come you're so close to them, and I stopped, and I thought about it, and I was thinking, we have the same heart, we love our pastors, we're like armor bearers, we have the same spirit, and we're always in the same, you know, we have the same eyes and same hands. And so, you know, with that in mind, you know, we took over a church um, five years ago. And we had a church of 40 people. And, and we ended up with 20. And today we are under a tent having revival with over 300 chairs right now. I mean, we're not going in our building because it's just too small. When you come to our church now, everybody's like, this is like a classroom, you know? And so God's moving there, but all I could think about is what God is doing here. I'm ready. I would love to come and knock down this wall with you guys. Come on. You guys are a lighthouse to this whole area, this whole community. And, and, and I remember Crystal uh, not being too happy with our husbands when they're so visionary and they want to do all these crazy things. And sometimes, you know, us when we built our classrooms or we did all these things and everything looks great, then they come and want to knock down walls. And, well, we did that. Our building had a bunch of people renting it, and we prayed out those people and prayed out those people. Then we, just to knock down a wall, it cost us $1,000 to put another 80 chairs, and we knocked down. What could we knock down? So you need to knock down. I hope that we come back, and there's a wall knocked down. Because when I was able to come in here this morning, the presence of God is here. I don't know. The worship team is at a whole nother level. I think we probably, we probably come here once a year, and it wasn't the same as last year. Amen. And so God is moving and moving, but you're a lighthouse. You're a lighthouse. You're a lighthouse. And, 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 and be, be, have pride. Have pride in your church. Good pride. Good pride to bring in your family and bring in your loved ones because, you know, you're going to be a baby church. You can only say that for so long. I think you can say that when it may be up to five years. But, you know, one thing we've learned that numbers don't lie. Numbers, we can say this and we can say that. But when they look at NoHo and they say, oh, they raised $10,000. And they say, oh, these churches have been around 20 years and they've raised 5000 So the responsibility, God says, no, 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 no. I don't care how long you've been saved. You know, God is going to raise you up and he's going to do a mighty work. So I think you need to stay prayed up, stay positioned, stay ready because God has a beautiful plan in Oho. Amen. And I love you guys. And, and I'm so blessed to be here. And, um, my favorite preacher is going to preach. So I get excited to hear him. But, you know, before he became a pastor, you know, with our pastor, he wanted to be an evangelist. And so that was the track that we were going to go on. He wanted to be an evangelist. We didn't want to be pastors. Like, we're like, what? He don't deal with people. He just wanted to go in and preach. So when he was coming here, I was like, come on, babe. I'm evangelist Pastor Rob is going to come this morning. So I pray that you're blessed. Amen. God bless you. Okay, come on, give her a hand. Amen. <clears throat> I want to deal with the problems. Amen. And he praise the Lord. Amen. God is good. I want to thank Pastor Ray, my Sister Crystal, amen, uh, not only for inviting me here, but uh, just for their friendship, amen, and, and um, I, I miss him. He used to come and visit me at least twice a month. He used to come, amen, to Long Beach, and, but then the pandemic hit, amen, so on Mondays were the pastor's day off, and 
how many know that long beach is the promised land amen and uh so he would come and go down to the pike and and but i think what he was doing is because every time he came i treated him <laughs> you know i buy I, I buy i buy him a steak or you know i mean i take him the bubba gumps and and, and so I was wondering, you know, I mean, the, okay, does, you know, is he here because I'm feeding him, or is he is is he, is he here because he's my friend, amen? And and uh, so so that's what I'm still waiting, amen. But he invited me to speak, so I believe he, he he's my friend, amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, I'll, I'll, I choose to believe the best, amen. Praise the Lord, amen. And we want to thank, amen, his wife, amen. And aren't they doing a great job here, amen? I mean, you guys have a great church. I mean, like my wife said, the, the worship was powerful, amen. The worship was awesome. And um, you can just see from the last time I was here, you guys have gone to another level, amen. And that's the good thing, amen, because, you know, you can go to churches and you can sometimes see uh, decrease or sometimes you can see stagnation, amen. But here in North Hollywood, amen, you are increasing in the run for hope giving, amen. You're increasing in your tithing, amen. And you're increasing in your worship and in your numbers, amen. And so give yourselves, amen, a hand because you make your pastor look good, amen. Praise the Lord, amen. I want you to open up your Bibles, amen, to 1 Samuel chapter 10. And also want to give a shout out to uh, my pastor, amen, Pastor Joe, amen. We love him and we thank God for him. And he has been a, a blessing into our lives, amen. He has been a friend, a mentor, a pastor, a shepherd. He has been those things which my wife and I had needed, amen. And uh, First Samuel, so we want to just thank the Lord for him. Let's pray. Father, we ask that you bless the reading of your word. We pray for your anointing. I pray that every heart would be open. I pray that you would speak to us and challenge us. And Lord, take us, God, to higher ground, Lord. And we give you the glory in Jesus' name. And everybody says? Amen. Come on, everybody says? Amen. In 1 Samuel uh, chapter number 10, I want to read two verses. Amen. Um, we're going to start with verse 1. The Bible says in 1 Samuel uh, chapter number 10, if you're there, say, uh-huh. The Bible says, and Samuel took the flask of oil. He poured it out on Saul's head. He kissed him and said, hasn't the Lord anointed you ruler over his inheritance? Amen. Here you see the prophet, amen, the man of God that he begins to anoint the next king or the first king of Israel. And he begins to pour the oil on him, which symbolizes to all of Israel that this is God's man and this is God's anointed. And the Bible says, now jump with me to verse 6. After he poured that anointing on him, we pick it up in verse number 6. And the Bible says, the spirit of the Lord will come powerfully on you. And you will prophesy to them, or with them. And you will be transformed when the signs have happened to you. Do whatever your circumstances require, because God is with you. Amen. One translation in, in, in verse 6 says, And you will be turned into another man. You will be turned into another woman. Here you see a man that the anointing of God, when it comes upon your life, that he begins to transform you into another person. I title this message, if you're taking notes, amen, and it's not just for the recovery home to take notes. Uh, I believe that everybody that comes to church should take notes because you uh, retain more. When I was in Bible college, they say you only retain 10%. Of what's heard they say you retain you know 30 percent of what's heard and seen you return uh, retain 60 percent of what's heard seen and said and when you begin to say it and then when you can return up to 70 percent by what you hear see say and write and obviously 90 percent when you hear see write, write and do so take notes when you're here in service so if you're taking notes i want to title this who don't you think you are 
Look at your neighbor and tell them who don't you think you are. We used to hear that saying, you know, back in the days, who do you think you are? You know what I mean? You know, somebody will come into the men's home and, who do you think you are? You know what I mean? So, you know, your, your, your mom will see you walking in and they say, who do you think you are, boy? You mean, I slept, I'll taste the, I slept the taste out your mouth. Who do you think you are? Come on, somebody. So I titled this, Who Don't You Think You Are? And I have a thought for you. What if your best days, your happiest moments, your greatest achievements will never come until you become who God called you to be? What if your greatest moments... Your greatest experiences, your happiest time in life, what if that will never come until you become who God called you to be? Are you still here? See, who don't you think you are? Throughout the whole Bible, the people of significance came, they came to become, they became who they didn't think they were. When you look at Abram, he became Abraham. When you look at Sarai, she became Sarah. When you look at Gideon, a man of fear, he became a man of valor. When you look at Simon, he became Peter. Also, when you look at the apostle Paul, before he became Paul, he was Saul. See, inside them was another person who they became who they didn't think they were. When you begin to look at some of the superheroes, inside Clark Kent was Superman. Inside Peter Parker was Spider-Man. Inside Bruce Wayne was Batman, and inside David Banner was the Incredible Hulk. The question I have for you this morning is who is inside of you that God wants to bring out? Who is that individual that is deep down inside that God says there is a man of God in there? There is a woman of God in there. There's a pastor inside of you. There's a pastor's wife inside of you. Who is inside of you that God says I want to bring out and build and, and let God use you to the fullness? Is somebody in the building here this morning? So I have a question for you. Who is inside of you? See, there was a point in Peter Parker's life when he didn't want to be Spider-Man. Hello, somebody. Just like there can be a point in your life when you say, well, I don't know if I want to do that, or I don't know if I can do that, or I don't know if I'm capable of doing that. And there was a point in his life when he didn't want to be Spider-Man because his grandfather had died in front of him, and he said, I am no hero. If I couldn't even save my grandfather, how am I going to be a hero to the world? For months, he went out being Peter Parker. And as he was being Peter Parker, he saw murder. He saw mugging. He saw stealing and he saw crime. And he watched all these things taking place with agony inside of him because there was something on the inside of him that wanted to do, that wanted to do something. Do you ever feel your heart stirred? Do you ever wonder why you can't sleep at night? Do you ever wonder why you cry when you go to World Conference or when you're here at the altar? Because there is a moving within your heart. There is a stirring within your spirit. There is something that God is doing on the inside. There's some things that just make you angry when you begin to see the sins of the world. Or you begin to see the brokenhearted. And there's something inside of you that gets angry at the devil that you want to do something. And you want to be able to make a difference in this world. I'm here to let you know that God has called you to make a difference in this world. God has called you to be by your pastor and by your pastor's wife and say, I'm with you, Pastor Ray. I will hold up your arms in prayer. I will hold up the vision in giving and I will put my hands to the plow because we have a vision and that vision is to reach North Hollywood and the world for Jesus. Are you still here? He had this stirring inside of him that wanted to do something. He had this passion inside of him as he began to see the mugging, the robbing, and the stealing, and the crime. And he wanted to do something. But he said, ah, that's not me. Because he was so damaged. And he was so hurt. And he began to struggle with his identity, who, who he was called to be. It wasn't until... Peter Parker went to his grandmother's house, and I believe she knew something. I believe she knew that he was struggling with his identity. She was pushing him back to his destiny. My question to you is this morning, who don't you think you are? Because inside of you is a hero. Inside of you is somebody's rescuer. Inside of you is a difference maker. 
Inside of you is a pace setter. Inside of you is a world shaker. Inside of you is a life giver. Inside of you is a voice that needs to be heard within the community inside of you is a minister of the gospel of jesus christ inside of you is a singer on the worship team inside of you is a women's home director inside of you is a leader of leaders inside of you is an armor bearer to your pastor and to your pastor's wife who don't you think you are oh come on i do a lot better when you talk back to me i know it's early amen but i know you had your coffee already you didn't just come to church without no coffee so i know that there's something inside of you that's being stirred up and if you can hear the sound of my voice let me hear you say amen no oh, i do a lot better when you talk back to me amen ask my wife come on, keep it clean keep it clean keep it clean Inside of you is a voice that needs to be heard. See, you need to discover where you came from and why you're here. God sent you. God brought you to Victory Outreach North Hollywood. North Hollywood. God brought you to, to partner with Pastor Ray and Sister Crystal. There is a divine appointment. There is a divine connection. The Bible says that God sets the solitary in families. In other words, God will bring the lost and bring them to a family and bring them to the body of Christ and bring them to a shepherd and to a pastor. So you have a divine connection with your pastor and everything that's inside of you is locked in your heart and your pastor has the key to be able to unlock the greatness that's inside of you. You see that in the, in, in the Bible. So, wait, 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 in the, it's in the Bible. The Bible says before, before uh, Saul met the, the, the prophet, he was looking for donkeys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you always looking for some donkeys too, hey, amen. You was, you was looking here. You were looking high. You were looking low. You were chasing false dreams. You were, you were chasing vanity. You were chasing the things that were vain. Amen. And he was looking for the donkeys, and he could not find the donkeys. And the Bible says that his servant said, let's go to the prophet. The prophet might tell us where the donkeys are. And when he went to the prophet, he came with a gift. He came with the gift because they didn't want to come to the man of God empty-handed, so they brought a gift to the man of God. And the Bible says that the prophet told him, meet me here tomorrow, and I will tell you everything that's in your heart. The man of God has the key to unlock everything that is in your heart. He has the key to unlock your destiny. He has the key to unlock your potential. He has the key to unlock your future. He has the key to unlock your calling he has the key to your destiny you got to get close to the man of God you got to get close to the woman of God because they have the destiny if your life in their hand ah, look at your neighbor and say get close get close get close are you still here you need to discover why you're here where you came from because God sent you here and God has a plan for your life when you look at the harvest, when you look at the law of the harvest, it will cost the seed his life so that he can become the potential that he has. Even Jesus said it. He said a seed must, a kernel of seed must fall to the ground and die in order for it to become wheat. And just like that, you and I must die to the old man. You must die to Slick Willie. You must die to Shady Cheryl. You must die to that old woman. You must die to that old man in order for you to become all that God's called you to be. You must fall to the ground and die so that that kernel of wheat can and produce the harvest that's inside of it. Ah, look at your neighbor and say, who don't you think you are? And Jesus said in John chapter 12, verse 24, once again, he said, most assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. In other words, Jesus was saying, you can't keep being Jacob and be Israel at the same time. You can't continue.
continue to be shady Cheryl and be the woman of God at the same time. You can't be slick willy and a man of prayer at the same time. The seed must fall to the ground and die in order for the man of God and the woman of God to rise up. Are you still here? Jacob had to die before he became Israel because Israel and Jacob are the same guy. But Jacob is the guy before he met Jesus, before he met God. And then when he met God, God said, now you're no longer Jacob. You are now going to be called Israel which means prince of God. Jacob means trickster, shady, scandalous. Don't look at nobody. Don't look at nobody. This thing. Another time to look at nobody. Another time they're like. But you can't keep being Jacob and be Israel. At the same time, Peter Parker, he couldn't be Peter Parker and Spider-Man at the same time. That's why he would disappear. That's why you look at Spy uh, Superman. He, he never changed in public. He would only change the old school movie. He used to go to a phone booth. And in the phone booth, he would shut the door behind him. And when, oh, just like Jesus said, when you go to prayer, shut the door behind you and don't let nobody see you. Because when you come out your prayer closet, you might go in like Clark Kent. But by the time you come out of your prayer closet, you're going to come out like Superman. Ah. But you cannot continue to be both. You can't be a coward and fearful and insecure like Gideon one was and be a hero to the public. Are you still here? You see, the harvest of the new you involves the person you don't want to be or you don't want to die to. You can't keep the old you and become the new you. Simon had to get out of the way to let Peter arise. Because when Jesus met Peter, his real name was Simon. And when he met him, and every time when you read the Gospels, and every time when, when, when Peter messed up, Jesus would always refer to him as Simon. Simon, Simon. But every time he did good, he would say, Peter. You see, but why? Because the, that was the old man that doubted. It was the old man that betrayed him. It was the old man that was fearful. And so Peter could not keep being Simon at the same time. One of them had to die. But in order for you to experience your happiest days, your blessed days, your wonderful days ahead of you, it's going to require for you to become the person that's inside of you. Oh. Simon had to get out of the way to let Peter arise. The kernel of wheat has to die, which represents the old you, in order for the harvest, which represents the new you, to come. Now, how do you die? That sounds good. But how do you die? You die by being godly. You got to learn to practice godliness. You got to learn to go through the process of sanctification. Sanctification is a theological word of just being changed daily. The transformation as you're walking with God that every day you're being sanctified and every day you're shedding skin. Every day you're shedding the old you. Every day he, the old you is behind you. Are you still here? But listen, the old you is a shadow that will always try to catch up to you. The old you is right behind you. He's not far from you. So that's why you got to continue to stay godly and continue to pursue righteousness and continue to clothe you in holiness so that God can raise you up and you can be all that God called you to be. How else do you die? You got to trust. You got to trust God. And you got to trust your pastors. Well, that was your amen. You missed your shout. 
You got to trust your pastor. We trust you with the vision. We let you run with the vision of North Hollywood. We let you even wear the shirt of North Hollywood. We represent, you know, you go on and buy the shirt. We believe in you. We trust you that you're going to represent the ministry and represent the pastors well. We trust you with ministry that you're going to do well in the life group and well in giving out the grab and go. We trust you. So why can't you trust your pastors as well? Oh, that's your shout. Don't miss your shout. You're going to have to trust. Trust God. Amen. How else do you die? It's through humility. Uh, Humility. Where you begin to humble yourself. Because the Bible says that God will raise up the humble. And God will give grace to the humble. How else do you uh, die? It's through submission. Submission. It's two words, sub and mission. The word sub means under, like a submarine. Sub means under, marine is the water, the marine. So sub means, it means under. So when you say sub, it means under. Mission is the, your, your mission. So it means to put your mission under another man or another vision, and we got to begin to submit. Are you still here? How else do you die? Obedience. Someone say obedience. How else do you die? Sacrifice. How else do you die? Through faithfulness. Oh, thank, we thank God in Victory Outreach Long Beach for consistent givers. We thank God for those people that don't come sporadic. We thank God for those faithful members. We thank God for those people that pray for us faithfully. We thank God for those people that we don't. Do you know when when you don't get? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me slip. Let me slip. When you feel unappreciated, that is really a compliment. But I didn't appreciate you. Everything I do, they don't appreciate it. Yeah. When you feel unappreciated, it is a compliment. Why? Because it shows that you're always there. It shows that you're always faithful. It shows that you're always at the door. And because we know that you're always going to be at the door. We don't got to come and play kissy kissy with you. And we don't got to come and play huggy huggy with you. And we ain't got to come and say, oh, you're doing a good job. And no, oh, we thank you that you're there. We just know that we can walk through. You're there. We know that we can come in the green room. You're there. We know that you can come on the worship team. You're there. And so you might feel unappreciated. But what it's really telling the pastors and what's really telling others is that you can be counted on and you are faithful. Ah. Listen, God wants us to die to selfishness. Amen. And when you are captivated by yourself, ourselves, it destroys us. There's a Greek mythology that says this. There's a man by the name of Narcissus. He was a good-looking young boy, and he came from hunting. And he went down by the pool to drink because he'd been out in the woods forever. Or not forever, but a long time. And he was thirsty as heck. But when he came to the pool to get something to drink, he saw the reflection of himself and how good looking he was. And he didn't want to drink from the water because it would disrupt his image. And Greek mythology say that he died of thirst because he was so caught up within himself. And my point to you this morning is don't be caught up in self. Learn to live for others because when you live for yourself and you don't want to disrupt the image that you see of yourself, it will bring death unto you. Are you still here? See, these things that I mentioned to you, they build your character. Narcissist, when he was born, his mom went to the prophet named Tyrese, and she asked the prophet, will my son enjoy long life? The prophet says, as long as he doesn't pursue himself. I get it. It's Greek mythology, but it's principle. I get it that it's myth, amen, that it's a a a non-realistic story, but people believe it too. But there's principles in these things. Are you still here? See, a caterpillar 
must go through the metamorphosis. You cannot be a caterpillar and complain that you cannot fly. It must go through the process. Do you know that your pastors have gone through a process? They didn't just show up on the scene and say, we're here. They didn't just begin to show up and say, ta-da, amen. They went through a process of correction, of rebuke, of discipline, of being even ignored and being able to put on the shelf and say, we're going to leave you there and see how you act when I don't give you attention. We're going to see how you respond when I don't say hello to you. We're going to see how you behave when no nobody's around we're gonna put you on the show your pastors have gone through some stuff they didn't just show up on the scene they went through a process they were caterpillars at one time then they were going through the process of metamorphosis and they went into the cocoon and when they got into the cocoon by the time they came out the cocoon they came out with some wings and when they came out with some wings they started flying and God said you're gonna fly to North Hollywood and you're gonna establish a church you're gonna reach treasures out of darkness you're going to win the world for Jesus. But you got to go through a process as well because there's greatness inside of you. There's power inside of you. You're somebody's hero. You're somebody's deliverer. Your voice needs to be heard at work. Your voice needs to be heard in the community. You got a song in your heart. You got sermons inside of you. You got messages you got to preach. There's something inside of you. Who don't you think you are? Are you still here? Who don't you think you are? You have to let one part of you go so that you can become. This process might not be quick. It took Moses 40 years. It took King David from the first time he was anointed. It took him 15 years. But he knew who he was going to become. Are you still here? But because he had not changed, it took Moses 40 years. He was trying to be a deliverer with the old man. He knew that God called him to deliver Israel. He knew that God called him to be a rescuer of the people. But because he was trying to do it on his own without change, the Bible says that he killed an Egyptian and he buried him. And, and God said, no, 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 no. You're not going to be able to do what I've called you to do without change. See, God wants to bring change into your life. The way this church is going to be a mega church in the valley, it's when people begin to rise and change and be all that God had called them to be. No, are you still here? It's when you begin to function like you got 500. It's when you begin to behave like you're 500. It's when you begin to lead like you're 500. It's when you begin to sing like there's 500. When you begin to have the space of 500. When all that, you got to be who God has called you to be before you become all that God has called. No. Are you still here? You can't. You can't reach 500 people with the level of the leadership of 100 people. So that means the leader must develop and grow and go into that prayer closet and build the trust of the man of God and the trust of the woman of God. And also you trust God. So when they pick up pledges, you'll be able to say, I trust the Lord. The Bible says that David said, I was young and now I am old and I've never seen the righteous beg for bread nor their children lack. Are you still here? Are you in the building? Don't miss your shout. He was trying to be the deliverer without allowing the old man to die. And 40 years later, amen, Moses, as he was taking care of the sheep and the goats, God met him again and said, you are now not the person who I brought out here. Are you still here? 
And that's what's going to happen. There's going to be some time when God begins to say, you're not the same man that walked into this church. You're not the same husband that walked into this church. You, you, you used to push around your wife, but now you love her, and, and now you're bringing home flowers, and now you're treating her well, and, 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 and now you're bringing gifts, and it's not even her birthday. Now you learn to be sensitive when you was all rough and tough. Now you're becoming that husband who now I can use you in a great way because if your marriage ain't put together, it will hinder your ministry. you got to have your marriage in order. Are you still here? We'll save that for the pumpkin. <clears throat> and then on Thanksgiving, you can put the turkey in the oven, whatever his name is. He said, you're not the same man, and you're not the person who I brought out here. I have a question. Oh, there, there goes my alarm. Supposed to be barely waking up right now. Thank God, for Pastor Ray. Thank God for my friend. Got me getting up early, come and preach. That ain't my wake up. That's my time to shut up. But I have five more minutes of your time, please. I have a question for you. Who was Hananiah? Mishael, and Azariah. Well, these were the three Hebrew boys that were thrown into the fiery furnace by Nebuchadnezzar. These were the three Hebrew boys who the world changed their name. They were brought into Babylon. Amen. They were brought in as captives to serve the Babylonian king, Nebuchadnezzar, pay attention, pay attention, pay attention. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Come on, come on. Give him a hand. Mm. They were brought into ba Babylon to serve unto the Babylonian king, and they came as slaves, and they came as captives. But Nebuchadnezzar and the Babylonians didn't like their Hebrew names, so he gave them Babylonian names. Amen. Their Babylonian names, which is you know them, which is Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Amen. The Abednego, his name means servant of Nego, which was a false god. So the Nebuchadnezzar, when he seen these Hebrew boys, he says, I'm going to change them. I'm going to change them by changing their name. Are you still here? So he called them what they were not, amen, so that they could forget who they really were. Oh, yeah, that's why they called you shady out in the street. That's why they called you scandalous out in the street. That's why they called you strawberry, strawberry when he was out in the streets. Because the devil was trying to get you to forget who you really were. Because who you really were was a man of God. Who you really are is you're destined to serve Jesus. Who you really are is you're destined to serve God with all your heart. Who you really are, you're destined to be by your pastor and labor with him and hold his hands up. That's your shout. When I, Oh, come on, somebody. That's your shout. So they were named after Babylonian gods, and he called them what they were not so that they can forget who they really are. Be careful, because then you can get stuck thinking, I'll never change, because that's what they told you. Oh, you're never going to change. You're always going to be the same. You're just like your father. You act like your mother. You're never going to change. Be careful, because they're going to put the, the labels on you that you're never going to get married, that you're never going to prosper, that you're always going to be broke, that you're never going to get ahead that you'll never change you got to be careful because this way of thinking can get stuck are you still here and you got to be careful what you tell yourself these three hebrew boys were thrown into the fiery furnace and when they were thrown into the fiery furnace listen when these three hebrew boys did not bow down to the statue nebuchadnezzar said i'm going to throw you in the fire 
And they didn't bow down, so he threw them in the fire. And when they were thrown into the fiery furnace, their true nature came out. Because the nature of their uh, was linked to who they are. Are you still here? Hananiah, what his real name meant was that God is gracious. Mishael, his name means that no one is like God. As Azariah, his name means that God will help. And when they were thrown into the fire, their true nature came out. He changed the name of this individual, but he could not change what was on the inside. And the devil will try to put labels on you, but you cannot change what's on the inside. If you got a can of beans and you put a label that says corn, it can say whatever it wants on the outside. But we and I know that this beans on the inside. You can say whatever you want about me, but on the inside, I got the Holy Ghost. I got Jesus. I got the vision. I got my pastor's back. I got the heart of the ministry. Are you still here? As he comes to the keyboard. See, life might label you. So who don't you think you are? Life might label you just because what they say of you and just because of what they call you, that doesn't make that's who you are. They can say, well, you're not educated. You're a single parent. You can't read good. You're not smart enough. You're a dropout. You're a gang member. You're a Mexican or you're African American. You're a drug addict. You've been a prostitute. You're black. You're criminal. You're, you're a felon. You're, you're, you're a drunk. You're a loser. Life can put these labels on you, but that's not who you are. Who don't you think you are? Because there's someone on the inside of you that wants to come out, but he cannot or she cannot come out until the old you dies. These three Hebrew boys, their true nature could not come out until they were put to death in the furnace. And when they were put to death in the furnace, their true nature, which means God is gracious, which means there is no one like God, and which the last one means that God is with us. And when you look at the story, the Bible says that Nebuchadnezzar, when he looked in the furnace, he told his servant, did we not throw three boys in there? He said, yes, sir. We threw three boys in there. He said, why is there a fourth man in there that looks like the son of God? Listen, my friend, I'm here to let you know that God is with North Hollywood, that God is with the recovery home, that God is with the leadership, and God is with your pastor. And if God be for us, then who can be against us? Listen, my friend, it's time North Hollywood to rise up. Let me tell you something. All I eyes are on you people are watching you from around the world you are a model church you are an example to other pioneering churches you are building with quality you are building with success you are building very quickly you're probably one of the fastest growing churches that from pioneering with nothing throughout the whole wide world